Hello there and welcome to the shop. This video is a carry on from the last video where I showed you in Cavco how to create a sign and even make a logo with the tools in Cavco. So today we're going to machine it with this brand new Sensma Jumitsu Prover XL 6050 Plus. Now this is the CNC router I would suggest uh, anybody to to have a serious look at. You know if you've done your time on a 3018 or something like that and you're looking to buy something a little bit more serious, something that you can actually you know on the weekends or in the evenings uh, work with and make some of your money back because this machine will absolutely do it. Um, I wouldn't recommend the 6040s that you see on eBay. Okay, just go straight to the SaneSmart website and have a look at this. Uh, there's a sale on at the moment and those of you in Australia who are saying to me, oh we can't get them into Australia, just drop them an email, same smart, and uh, they'll arrange it for you. Okay, so I'm going to start you off right at the very beginning uh, and show you right at the very start how to operate one of these machines and how to turn out a pretty decent plaque or sign. Uh, the first thing I want to point out to you is that I am running this machine using UGS. You can also use Candle which are free programs so there's no extra expense there. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the piece of work on the table. So what I do I measure straight from this edge. Now this is square to the Y, okay? So you just get an ordinary rule. So 110. Okay, there like that. If you don't get this the same distance and have this exactly square on your table when you machine uh, whatever you want to machine onto your piece of work here uh, it's going to come out skew if at an angle that's okay that's good and so the next thing is the clamps now the way to put these clamps on is with the the nose of the clamp you see it's slightly angled over let's take it off and I'll show you Okay, so it's, uh, it's angled over like that, and this is your, your T-nut uh, assembly, and this here is the, the it's actually a heel. So we pop that in there like that. So I have mine normally level, so the, the, the toe then is down onto the material like that. So it's just the very front edge here is actually clamping the material. If it's at an angle like this, with the vibration of the router over a, a period of time, it is possible that it can spit the work out. Okay, so this is the way I prefer. So I'm going to screw this down slightly to and what this is doing is putting the thread into the bottom of here just to stiffen it up a little. Now you can tighten the wing nut down substantially. Let's have a look here. That's pretty good. And do the same with the other three. So the next thing we're going to do is change the tool and put this V-bit carving tool in and we're going to change it by the use of these uh, spanners which are also provided with the machine 
at no cost. Now we put the new tool in. Now I put I put the tool as close up to the chuck nut uh, as I can because then it limits the, the flex of the actual shaft. If there is any. <laughs> and I'll tighten it up. Don't have to over tighten it, just nice and firm. Just check and see that it's nice and square in there and it's uh, nothing's out of balance or anything like that. Beautiful. So before we do anything else I'm going to ask UGS to home the machine. That's simply done. By coming up here to this little house, if it, I don't know whether you pick that out on the screen and press that. So you'll notice now that the, the, the lower figure of these three, uh, they're all backed off minus three uh, millimeter. That means the, um, the each axis has gone up to the limit switch and just backed off three millimeter and registered exactly where the home position is. So now I'm going to raise up the, the jog for the uh, let me see, I think 25 millimeters would be fine. That's per press of each one of these arrows for the X and Y. And I think we'll go 10 millimeters at this stage for the Z. So now by using these arrows, I'm going to move, actually I'll use this one here so I can move the X and the Y together and I'll bring it over and we're going to register the 0, 0 or the start of the work of our project. Okay so you'll notice here I have the probing module open in UGS. Now to, to open that if it's not on your screen you just come up here to window and come down here to plugins and there it is there. Just click that and it will appear on your screen. Now I've I've got 19.5 set there. Now that is the thickness of my puck. So that's where you put that figure there. And the figure below it, which is minus 10, now that what that's telling UGS is to go and look for the puck on top of the work but only travel down 10 millimeters and then stop okay so that's the recommended figures that I would put um, obviously you have to measure your own uh, Z0 puck and put the figure in there okay so we will now zero the Z so put your puck underneath the old tool and put your crocodile clip on the shaft of your tool. If you don't put this on, this won't stop until you know the motor will stall. Okay, so now I'm going to ask UGS to automatically look for the uh, Z. I'll quickly turn you back so you can see what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to be doing is just pressing this here and that will start off the probing function.
Here we go. And there you go. Okay, so I have the jug set at uh, one millimeter sh per uh, depress of the Z minus or Z down. I'm just going to bring it down fairly close ish. That'll do. Uh, I'm going to alter the jog to one millimeter for the X and Y. So let's just jog it over. Uh, I actually, when I drew this job up in Curve Curl, I set the center of the work as the start of the position of the job, which I find easier. Uh, I'm going to drop that down to half a millimeter per job rate. It's a little bit, uh, moving a little bit too much. That's good. That's pretty well bang on. So now I'm going to set the zero zero in UGS. So now I'm going to set the job zero zero by opening opening machine, action, and X0 machine, actions, and whoop, missed it Y0 and of course we've already set the zero position of the Z so we don't have to worry about that so now we are ready to bring in our first toolpath.